Hey everyone, it's Professor Williams and today we're going to talk about contingency tables and probabilities. So I'm going to show you how to use a contingency table um, and solve probability questions. Sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? All right, so before we get just started, just a quick reminder. When used for probability, each cell in a contingency table represents one joint event which is the same thing as saying one joint response. Right? So we're going to use that with this survey data. Um, every year, Americans spend millions of dollars on veterinarian expenses. So a survey was conducted to determine if people would purchase health insurance that covers both routine and emergency vet expenses for their pet. So the survey asked cat and dog owners, and they were simply asked, would you purchase pet health insurance? And so they surveyed 417 pet owners and they presented the results in the contingency table that's shown below. So remember that when we're dealing with contingency tables, this idea of each cell represents a joint event. All of these people right here are dog owners who said yes. These are cat owners who said yes. These are dog owners who said no. These are cat owners who said no. This value right here is the total number of people who said yes, both cat and dog owners. These are the people who said no. This is the number of dog owners in the survey. This is the number of cat owners in the survey. And this is the total number of people who were surveyed. So we're going to use this idea of each one of these cells being a joint response in order to solve some probability questions. So the first thing we're going to look at is this idea of if a pet owner is randomly selected, what is the probability that he or she is a dog owner who would purchase pet insurance. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for pet dog owners, yes. So I'm interested in these people here. Okay. And because those are my dog owners who said that they would purchase pet insurance, and I want to know out of the total of 417, what percentage or what is that probability? So I take my 156 dog owners, divide it by the 417 people I had in my survey, and then I'm going to reduce that into a decimal and then convert it into a um, percentage. So I end up with 0.3741. And because we always talk about probabilities in terms of percentage, we're going to say that 37.41% of our respondents were dog owners who said they would purchase pet health insurance. All right, so in this question, we want to know what is the probability that we have a respondent or if we have a pet owner and we want to know what's now the probability that they're a cat owner who would not purchase pet insurance. So I'm interested in these cat owners that are right here and I want to know the nose. So there were 66 cat owners who said no. So that's the 66 out of the 417 people that we asked. So again, we're going to divide that down, get ourselves a decimal. Put my decimal point in there. 158, and I went out one more, 27. And that's going to round to roughly 15.83% 
of the people in this survey were cat owners who would not purchase pet health insurance. All right, now we're going to look at a, a, special, a more specialized case, and that is you look at the question and it says, given that the person is a dog owner. So that means that something has already happened, right? given or it is known that the person is a dog owner. This um, triggers this use of, condition, of a conditional probability. Right? Remember that when we have a condition or something is already known or something has already happened, the one thing we are, are sure of is that it reduces the ones from which we select. So given that the person is a dog owner, now what we know is we are only selecting out of the dog owners, not of everybody, but just out of these dog owners. So now I know that no matter what, no matter who I'm looking for, I know I'm only going to select the ones um, who are dog owners, right? I have reduced the number from which I'm selecting, and I want to know what's the probability they would purchase health insurance. So now I have 156 out of the 228. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my 156, divide it by my 228. I'm going to get a decimal of 60.68. Four two, which is going to be roughly 68.42%. So look for this idea that something has already happened, right? We already know um, what's going on. God, those lines are terrible, right? But this idea of the given. So I just want to reiterate, right, that in this conditional probability, it's always going to be the probability of A given B is going to be solved by the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. And that's where B is what is given. And since it was given that the person was a dog owner, that's how I knew that I was only selecting out of these 228. Right? Cool. All right, let's see what else we have. All right, so now in this question, it says, what is the probability that we have either a cat owner or someone who would purchase pet insurance? So remember in those ors, we have this idea that the probability of A or B is always going to be equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. Then remember, with or probabilities, we have to look for the double dips, right? We have to see if there are any that are both A and B. So I'm going to say probability of A, cat owner, um, 189 out of 417. So I'm going to take them. I'm going to put them right here as if they were my A's. Whoops. Sorry. 189 divided by 417. Now, I'm going to look for my B's. Those are the people who would purchase health insurance. So there are 279 of them. Remember, I want either cat owners or people who said yes. And 279 out of the 417 said yes. 
So now if you're working on your calculator, right, you add the 189 plus the 279, whoa, I got 468. That's greater than one. So it's like ding, 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 ding. I bet I've got some who are both. So do I have cat owners who would purchase health insurance? Yep, I sure do. I have 123 of them. So now I've got to take that 123 of the 417 and subtract them out because this 123 is included in that 279 and that 123 is also included in my 189. So I've counted it once, twice, and remember, no double dips. So now I have to take the 189, add the 279, and then back out the 123 who are both. And that leaves me with 345 out of the 417 who are either a cat owner or someone who would purchase pet health insurance. And that gives me 82 0.73%. Again, all I did was take my, do my division, get me a decimal, and then convert it to a percent by either moving the decimal place two points to the right or multiplying by 100. And we're going to end with an easy one that you all can almost guess the answer to. So now I just want to know dog owners. Right? I just want to know dog owners. doesn't matter if they said yes or no. I just want dog owners. And so that's what this total represents here. This represents dog owners because we got dog owners that said yes. We have dog owners that said no. So what we know is out of the total number of people who are in the survey, we had 228 out of the 417 people surveyed. And we know that that comes out to 0.54676. And so 0.54676 and a bunch of change. So I'm going to round that up to 0.54 to 54.68%. So I know of all of the people who were um, surveyed out of the 417 that were surveyed, roughly 54.68 or a little bit, a little bit over half of the people who participated in the survey were dog owners. I hope that this helps. And until I see you in my next video, I hope you stay well.